My name's Kevin Murray. I'm a group vice president at the company, joined about six months ago. So if you're not familiar with Elastic, uh, founded in 2012, so that makes us about 12. <laughs> uh, almost 3,000 employees. Uh, we're a public company, by the way. Um, and so uh, we um, have you know, operations in over 40 countries. We do business with a uh, just, just north of 50% of the Fortune 500. So uh, we're working more and more with large enterprises trying to do manage data at scale, build applications at scale. Fundamentally, an app dev company expanding into more uh, uh, interesting use cases outside of that app dev uh, capability that is really based on the heritage of search. And the heritage of search, of course, is from keyword search all the way into relevance and more context-based. Uh, that, that's really what you're going to hear the most about today when Philip takes the stage and talks about vector database, vector search, and relevance capabilities that you know, we feel like we are, are doing uh, in conjunction with the community uh, better than anyone out there. The data volumes are increasing and our role in helping to manage data is not coincidental. Uh, whether it's uh, the number of downloads, sheer downloads that we've had around vector database, or the number of pull requests, commits, uh, search has definitely changed how the world uses data. And so the applicability is really interesting to, um, to AI, but let me start with a quick mo metaphor. With, with every disruptive technology, like a smartphone, there are two categories of solution. And there's technologies that are the enabling technologies, whether it's the processors or the guts or under the hood, or there is the solutions that become enabled as a result of those core enabling technology. So you've got the you know, gyroscopes and geolocation capabilities over here that turn into fantastic customer experiences over here with Uber and Waze and whatnot. So that's the foundation of the metaphor. Let's apply that to AI. And if the enabling technologies for generative AI in particular are the LLMs that I'm sure you've talked about and debated at length uh, at field day, orchestration with things like Langchain, the enabled solutions become really the interface to the user. And so whether it's chat GPT, Copilot or whatnot, same idea. Why am I telling you this? Well, because Elastic actually plays in both areas. And so if you know us as the Elastic Stack or Elk Stack or you know, kind of that search-based application development platform, that's great. But we also have created bespoke solutions on top of that ourselves and grown our business on those solutions. We call them out-of-the-box solutions, and I'll tell you about those in a moment. But it's kind of interesting to be on both sides of the fence here, where search and its capabilities around what we call search AI, the combination of, like I said earlier, the precision of search, the intelligence of AI, is really driven by these tried and true advances in search capability. From vector database, semantic search, inference models, uh, you know, retrieval augmented generation for greater relevance and continuity. And so we are very proud of you know, working with the broader community to come up with a way to cover more ground in all of the kind of array of technologies around search excellence. Uh, whether it's embeddings and creating vector embeddings, to hosting those capabilities, hybrid search around semantic search, um, and other types of, of, of ways of getting to the right answer and the semantics associated with the right answer that people typing into their, uh, their prompt may not even know uh, what they're looking for. Uh, we pride ourselves on being completely comprehensive in this area. Now, on the other side of the model, You've got the enabled solutions. And some of you may not know that we are in the security and observability business as well. These are fast growing businesses for Elastic. And if search is our heritage and kind of our core, I like to call that our core business, we've enabled a differentiated way to do observability and security. And so if you know anything about these two spaces in particular, they're very crowded. There's a lot of noise. People are talking about AI. Is there a swear jar if you say AI, AI powered or something like that? Because <laughs> you know it happens all the time. So we don't really do that. We talk about how search is the way to drive greater relevance in observability and effectiveness in security. Okay. So if you look at the evolution of these technologies in particular, in this observability and security space, there were the point products, first generation. 
things like Nagios or Nagios, however you want to pronounce it, even Symantec, my old alma mater, ArcSight. You know, these are the telemetry solutions looking to just pour information into the, the SOC or the NOC, right? And then second generation is more correlation, more things working together, more data points into the system. But it creates the problem over and over again that you either have a skills gap or you have a toil issue with your staff. It's just kind of an un, unmitigated data problem. And so the third generation is where you can use this informed relevance or effectiveness or insights through search to actually create more effective observ observability and security solutions. And so this whole gamut, if you've spent any time in the security space, one of these things is great, two of them is better, all three are the best. Proper detection, proper diagnosis, and proper remediation. The reason I'm telling you this is, if we were just in these businesses separately, we would not be in a great situation. But the fact that all these things work together and can call on the data models that we've built in search, you have actually anomaly detection, so behavioral analysis. You've got ML power detection rules that look at, you know, whether you bring your own ML model or use our own out of the box uh, ML models for greater detection and faster detection. Uh, just recently, one of the security conferences, RSA, I'm sure you're familiar with, we released something called attack discovery. And this is uh, the ability to really look at um, the characteristics of an, of an attack, uh, look at what the most important triage steps need to be, and then it extends into using generative AI to recommend the most uh, appropriate remediation steps within your, your enterprise. If you think about that for a second, most of it is based on best practices of remediation done outside. And so uh, with attack discovery, it's basically relevant to your organization, relevant to your data. And then what that does is that cuts the time to remediation drastically. Um, hey, Kevin, yeah. anomaly detection, there's, there's plenty of different vectors that, that uh, ransomware shows up at. Yeah. I mean, where do, you, where do you play in anomaly detection? Is it the storage level, networking level? Storage is the big thing, like the tiers of storage and being able to quickly access data that is maybe buried in a frozen tier versus kind of a different uh, part of the tier. Speaking more from a ransomware anomaly detection perspective, are you mm -hmm. plugging into the storage interface to try to understand anomalies at the data level or? Yeah, my understanding is yes, but uh, you know, we, maybe we'll go a little deeper with Philip. I don't know if he can answer that as well, but okay. uh, that's how we are architected is uh, accessing data very, very quickly through various tiers of storage so you can quickly get access to those, those the, the data that's uh, at rest or uh, the potentially susceptible data in your organization. Um, so more coming as well, uh, whether it's, um, uh, you know, the actual workflows associated with remediation, we'll uh, invest in those and you'll see more uh, of that as we go. Take a picture of that before I go. All right. I wanted to show kind of a, a, a demo in action. This is kind of a, a long demo of, you know, kind of what the typical situation is with alerts and, you know, the type of information coming into your average stock. So the way attack discovery works is it does look for, you know, kind of this, uh, you know, bad behavior, the anomalies that we were just talking about, um, looking for characteristics of malware infiltration or data exfiltration and, trying to see if that's going to break policy, okay? Um, and so uh, as we go through and see kind of how it's working, you're, you're looking at uh, typically an average number of alerts coming in are almost impossible for your average, you know, a network administrator or security, security administrator to quickly sift through themselves. So with the data that we've got, um, we give them the ability to quickly understand kind of the hot zones um, and then apply if we can get to the point here of how uh, we're using generative AI to actually uh, create the remediation steps and find the appropriate remediation steps as part of the security analyst steps to create or lock down uh, the, the, the possible breach or the uh, data exfiltration as it were. Um, so view an AI assistant, comes up, creates a system prompt, this person's going to ask, you know, what are the, how would I remediate this particular issue? And so the key here is that like AI assistants aren't new, but generating this appropriate steps for your organization 
based on the relevance of the information coming in from uh, the, uh, the, the models that we've built is the, 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 the way that we think that this is going to actually cut through. So are you through anything yet in incident response? There's a lot of interest in kind of reconstructing data into a narrative of what helped me understand what happened and what the attack. Yeah, kind changed. of like the post-incident response. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So that's, that's an important part of this is document kind of ways that the, the attack came in. Hence the name attack discovery is really understanding kind of the audit trail and where to actually uh, fortify potential uh, subsequent breaches as well. So are you uh, training this on custom data or are you, is this a RAG? You can do both, right? You can do it and they're separate, but you can, you can do it on your own enterprises data. You can pull in public data, but they're separate and not commingled. And so it's trained on, on either one. So no, but, but when you do the attack discovery, right? This is your solution, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Where did you get, what's the source of your training data to teach the, the AI model? what looks like an attack? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, we, we have our own, but uh, you know, I, I, need to, okay. I need a little backup on that one. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's a little bit of attack discovery and kind of what we're doing in the security space. Uh, the evolution here is um, you know, getting the data in and ingesting the data. One of the recent announcements we made was uh, an automatic import capability. One of the, one of the uh, issues that we see in the market is people reticent to change because of the amount of data they have uh, invested in the amount of logs that they have, for example. Um, we'll evolve this in a way that makes it super simple to ingest data and actually create, uh, whether it's um, the management or the policies associated with that data coming in. We uh, recently uh, announced ESQL, our own query language in this area as well. And then I have been able to uh, continue to help folks visualize whether it's observability data coming in from different uh, sources of telemetry. Um, that's how we're kind of investing on uh, evolving the platform in those two areas in particular. Okay, um, no presentation is complete without showing a architecture that shows how all these things work together. Uh, you know, shared services around uh, our search capability, visualization, and automation. Um, the way to think of it, of course, is that the core is build your own through Elasticsearch. And then of course, these solutions around security and observability that I started to introduce you to today. Um, and then finally, I wanted to take this full circle before I give Philip the floor to talk in more depth about uh, our vector database and vector search capabilities. Um, but um, essentially, we are ensuring that, you know, we're constantly trying to raise the bar on innovation in the search kind of fundamentals. Our lifeblood is the developer community, so we want to hear from the developer community. Um, we continue to work with the largest enterprises in the world to help them with the scalability challenges of whether it's building applications uh, to find data, to manage data, to visualize data, but also to protect and monitor their enterprises. Uh, and then the deep ecosystem to help drive the outcomes that's kind of a given uh, as the company has grown. Uh, I want to take it back to this final, final view here because yeah, I wish like I look like this again, but I don't. Uh, I look like this now, so 